Welcome back to Red and Blue. I'm Major Garrett. President Biden's State of the Union address was met with what can only be described as a blistering Republican rebuttal from Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Now, responses like that tend to be on the blistering side of things. So there's nothing particularly unusual about that. But to discuss this in greater detail, I want to bring in Danielle Alvarez. She is the communications director for the Republican National Committee. Danielle, it's good to see you. Um, one of the things that Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders said is it's time for a new generation of Republican leadership. That's, if I recall correctly, a direct quote. Is that another way of saying a post-Trump Republican Party? You know, I, that wasn't my takeaway from her message. I am part of that new generation of young Republican leaders. And what I took away from her is I could put myself in her shoes as uh, as a mom, as, as a wife, as a working mom especially. And I thought she delivered a very powerful message. It was in stark contrast to, uh, to the president's State of the Union. And, and I think you're seeing a lot of these young Republican leaders, not just Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who delivered the rebuttal in English, but I also want to shout out Congressman Juan Siscomani, who's another young Republican leader, was elected um, and, and, you know, delivered a stark contrast in the Spanish rebuttal. Mm -hmm. But that idea of a new generation, does that include President Trump, who is, of course, of a different generation? I think President Trump is an important part of the Republican Party, um, and it's clear he has a very strong base. But we also have room for a lot of leaders within our party, and I think that that is why we elected such uh, great Republicans across the country in Nevada, in South Texas, um, in my home state of Florida. And I think that all of that together is the reason why we have a House majority, why Speaker McCarthy was sitting behind the president as he delivered his State of the Union. And I think that um, not just Sarah Huckabee Sanders and her rebuttal, but new young Republicans that are bringing uh, right ideas to our party and growing our party as a result. You mentioned Florida. Uh, you might have noticed, as many of us did yesterday, kind of a side story to the State of the Union. The former president posting on Truth Social about the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, suggesting he was doing something along the lines of grooming. Do you have any idea what the former president meant by that or how good this is for the Republican Party writ large? You know, I was not uh, paying attention to that yesterday. I, like the American public, was focused on the State of the Union and the response from Republicans, as well as uh, Speaker McCarthy's speech the night before on the debt ceiling. So, um, you know, I think that that's where the focus is of the American people, really focusing on what the path forward and what the future of our union looks like. And the RNC is fully focused uh, on making sure that we uh, retire Joe Biden and we give the White House to Republican control. And clearly the Republican National Committee is going to pay attention to all those who may or may not run for the party's nomination in 2024. Governor DeSantis is weighing that. That's no secret. But this exchange yesterday, does it not suggest to you at the RNC that the party might be in for some brass knuckle conflicts between the former president and anyone such as the governor who might change or to seek to uh, challenge him? Sure, it's possible. It's possible that we have a broad field of candidates. Part of the RNC bylaws state that we don't get involved in primaries. And um, I actually think that that's pretty exciting because it means that while we are having discussions and while our candidates are um, you know, vying for the Republican nomination. We're focused on the nominating calendar on our early states. Um, we are focused on building infrastructure. We're doing voter registration and growing our party. We're opening community centers to bring our message to black, Asian, and Hispanic communities. And we're building that infrastructure so that we can hand over those keys to our eventual nominee and secure that victory and send Joe Biden packing. Danielle, you mentioned the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy's talk about the debt ceiling. After the speech last night and the interaction between the president and some members of the House Republican Conference, where do you think things have landed on the question of reducing, in any way, shape, or form, benefits for Social Security and Medicare? I think that the Speaker was pretty clear um, in, his, in his speech the evening before, before the State of the Union. And he was a pretty good barometer uh, from behind Joe Biden when Joe Biden was telling untruths and lying to the American people. I think that that's why uh, that response was elicited from, from uh, House Republicans and Senate Republicans during the State of the Union because it simply isn't true. And it's important to hold the president accountable uh, when he does tell lies and when he is untrue to the American people. What part was untrue? 
that Republicans are not interested in cutting Social Security or cutting Medicare. That was stated by the speaker, you know, that has been stated by the Republican um, House conference. And the president went ahead and, and repeated those untruths again last, last night. Picking up comments made in a different era, but not too long ago from Rick Scott, among other Republicans. Daniel Alvarez, the RNC. Thanks so very much. Thank you very much.